The iPhone 5C came out alongside the iPhone 5S back in 2013 and was essentially a plastic iPhone 5. It really changed almost nothing, but it was colorful. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and today we're taking a look at one of the strangest iPhones Apple has ever made. How does the iPhone 5C hold up in 2020? <laughs> How does this phone hold up? Well, considering it's approaching seven years old, about as well as you would expect, as in not very well. It's stuck on an old version of software, specifically iOS 10, which limits what you can do with it. Many newer apps are no longer downloadable, at least in their most current version, leaving a much older feeling experience, which is going to be a negative for the vast majority of people. Battery life is absolutely brutal for most of these old 5Cs. The battery was never that big to begin with, and thanks to most of these phones being used pretty heavily over the years, you'd be lucky to get multiple hours on a single charge. Basically, the 5C in 2020 is not a phone you'd want to be using. Shocker. That's pretty obvious from the get-go, but I think it's still interesting to take a look at this phone, especially just because of how unique it is. This is the last plastic iPhone Apple ever made, and before that there were only two, the iPhone 3G and the iPhone 3GS. Apple has since continued their previous stance of leaning into the premium quality of the brand and keeping things expensive across the board. The iPhone XR and 11 are essentially what the 5C tried to be, but those phones are both made with aluminum and glass giving a very premium feel. The iPhone 5C came out in 2013 alongside the iPhone 5S, but the year they came out is really the only thing they hold in common. The phones are very different, both in terms of hardware and the methodology behind them. I've done a few videos on this before, and if you're interested, I'll link them in the description below. But basically, the 5C was a cash grab on Apple's part uh, through and through, whereas the the 5S brought actual innovation and was a really, really positive influence on the smartphone industry as a whole. The design of the 5C is a big negative, although I'm a fan of it on the surface. We have a polycarbonate housing that comes in a lot of quirky colors. Green, white, blue, pink, and yellow. It doesn't look that bad, and in fact, I really like it. It was in a sense a breath of fresh air in the iPhone world. Before this, the only colors iPhones had had were white and black. We have a 4-inch retina display that looks quite good, but this phone is pretty small compared to what we have now. It's quite the adjustment coming from my very giant and very jailbroken iPhone 11 Pro Max, but it is quite nice for one-handed use. There really aren't a lot of phones like this anymore, with the iPhone SE being the only smartphone the same size still being supported. Under the screen there we have the home button without Touch ID, which I don't fault the 5C for because the 5S was the first iPhone to have Touch ID, but it is an annoyance. Uh, if you want some security on your phone, you'll be putting in your passcode every single time you unlock it. The 5 5C's problem isn't really with the design per se. It is plastic, but it's built well and is very comfortable to hold and use, and I loved it when I first got it back in 2014. The problem really comes down to the fact that this phone was just too darn expensive. It averaged around 100 bucks less than the iPhone 5S, which just wasn't a good deal when you consider how much you got with the 5S over the 5C. I mean, for some perspective, the 5C got updates from late 2013 to late 2017, whereas the 5S got to late 2019, two extra years of general usability for only a hundred bucks more if you were to buy it back in the day. Not to mention the better experience you got, thanks to the faster chipset and Touch ID. I wouldn't go so far to say that the 5C looked cheap, but it was made of plastic and that's what really stood out, along with the colors. People bought Apple for the premium brand, and the 5C really didn't fit that. Again, would have been fine if the price point matched the perceived quality, but it didn't. But let's take a moment to look at the cameras. On the back here we have an 8 megapixel sensor that can take photos, not good photos, mind you, although they weren't bad for 2013, and can take some nice shots in the right conditions. When it comes to older cameras, and even newer ones in a lot of cases, outdoor shots during the daytime is the trick to getting a half-decent shot. For video, we can record in 1080p at 30 frames per second, which is pretty standard and looks fine, I suppose. Does the job, so it's tough to complain. With the selfie camera, though, you can complain. It's only 1.2 megapixels, and it doesn't take a good selfie. Even for 2013, this was kind of rough, and, uh, 
yeah, not a whole lot to say other than that this is a pixely mess. Overall, the camera definitely could have been done better and was essentially just pulled from the 2012 iPhone 5. That isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially because the 5S really wasn't much of an upgrade in the camera department besides the flash. And so what I think Apple should have done is pulled the camera from the 5S and put it in the 5C. Why? Well, it would have been a great marketing move. You could say the 5C had the same camera as the 5S for a hundred bucks less. It's pretty much what they did with the iPhone 10R and 11. Same main cameras as the better models, plus the ultra wide on the 11. It makes the phones a much better value and increases interest in the general consumer. Your average Joe might not know anything about cameras, but if it's just as good as the newest iPhone, he or she will probably be more interested. They did not do that with the 5C, but I do think the 10R and 11 proves that Apple has learned from some of their mistakes at least. Another thing they've done with the 10R and 11 is given them the same chipsets as their better counterparts. The 5C didn't do this. It has Apple's A6 chip, same in the iPhone 5, and one gigabyte of RAM. For the time, it performed well, and even now on iOS 10, it's not terrible. For the most part, the software feels smooth, and I personally haven't come across many issues while using it. Where the age really shows is the battery life, which is just terrible on my 5Cs, and probably is just as bad, if not worse, for most still using this phone out there, if, you know, people are still using this phone, which they probably are. It can be brutal, and tends to die after only a couple hours of screen on time. This is just a reality of older devices in general, and Androids from 2013 will probably be in the same boat, so I digress. The iPhone 5C is the black sheep of the iPhone family. Here's every single iPhone leading up to the 5C. The first iPhone, the second iPhone, the third iPhone, the fourth iPhone, the fifth iPhone, the sixth iPhone, and the iPhone 5S, and then the iPhone 5C. It was different, and if you had to say something positive, it definitely showed Apple was ready to change things up and do something new for once. Mix the new colors with the, at the time, completely new software in iOS 7, and you had a machine unlike any Apple had ever created. But the execution of the 5C was all wrong. In 2020, this phone isn't that usable. Even if you can download at least pretty close to current versions of most apps right now, it's only going to get worse, and the truth is, with the battery life alone, this phone really isn't that usable. I could see using a 5C as a backup phone, or maybe as a music device in the car, or even as a device for a younger child so they have something that I message with, but otherwise I'd say time has passed it by. The 5S remains in much better shape, but at least we'll always be able to look back at the 5C as a phone that truly stood out back in 2013, for better or for worse. And with that, I think I'm pretty much done here. Did anybody ever have the iPhone 5C? Are you still using one somehow? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video interesting, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech if you'd like to for some reason. And there's also a Discord channel you should go check out. Link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.